Hey. Exelon. How you doing? Hey, Celtic. Cross stream on the 22nd. Uh, 22nd. That's uh, Saturday week, so a week tomorrow. Morning time central. Okay. I might be able to do that for a bit. Just on my Saturday stream. Morning time central. Yeah. I should be able to be there for a little bit, I think. That's good, excellent, that's good. Yeah. Just trying to think what morning time central you're six hours behind me. So and I start my stream at three PM. Uh, so I start my stream at nine AM your time. So you have to be pretty early in the morning for me to be able to see it, I think. Yeah, so yeah, so that's when I start my Saturday stream at nine AM your time, pretty much. Hey, Mama Hyper. Thanks for the uh, host. How you doing? Oh, it's time to switch already. Here we go. I'm just adding some uh, leather to my vice quickly that I bought. So I'm just adding that quickly before I uh, do the carving. But all I've got to do is glue it and get it in there, so... Um, let's do the far away view for a sec while I do that. Oh, hello. Wow, that went a bit weird. Yeah, we've got some um, we've got some nice trees outside. I've got a plum tree just outside. Um, I don't know if I can show you. So there, that's that's the plum. This is the plum tree here. You might be able to see like a bunch of plums hanging down here somewhere. So. And I'm just going to glue some things into my vice jaws here, but I just want to make it a little bit. There's a little bit extra missing here that I'm going to just make up. I bought these leather scraps online. It was like, I think, 10 or 11 pounds for just all these bits of scraps. So. so I'm just going to cut these. Found I can push a chisel through it pretty easily.
Oh, really Celtic? Yeah. Plum trees are pretty awesome. We've got quite a lot on there, so that's pretty good. So yeah, I'm just going to get glue on this and I'm going to squeeze the vise tight so that that's gluing up while we carve the rest of that thing there. Then when we've finished carving that, I'm going to have to um, cut another piece of wood, which is going to act as the bottom piece that those two side bits are going to go in. Ah. There we go. Hey Bama, how's it going? Hey Volnar, how you doing? Alright, that'll do. I've been sanding the back a little bit as well to make it rougher for the glue. And I'll show you the flower carving we did the other day as well in a sec. I'm just going to glue these in like I said. I'll show you in a sec, Banner. I've just got to glue these bits of leather into the vise, which I've been wanting to do for a very long time. I just haven't got around to doing it. For a sec. Yeah, not bad, thanks, Vonna, not bad. How about you? What have you been up to? Doing some dice trays and stuff? There we go. Let's get this one in there. Take the tops off that. There's a little ridge there and take off. Second table. Oh right, okay, the the game table. There you go, that's what we're doing today. Okay. Right, pack 
Так, на соли. Hey Juan, look at you with a fancy transition. Hey Juan, how you doing? Yeah, I'll show you the uh, flour carving in a sec, which I'm going to oil at the end of the stream. I didn't know if I was going to oil it or not, but I did some research on water-based stains and oiling over the top, and most people said you can do them. You can do it, so I'd like to try it at least. Let's just check out Bolognar's thing again before I forget. Once it opens, that top's being slow. There we go. Oh wow, pictures are so <laughs> sideways and upside down. I will show you guys, but it's 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 a bit of a brain, a brain. Brain pain. <laughs> I would see like gluing the top on there. Okay, cool. They look pretty big. Are they big? They look pretty massive. Yeah. Happens sometimes. Well enough. I'm alright, thanks, man. Yeah, do this. There you go. So that's the that's the side view, isn't it? I'm gonna oil on top of that later. So we'll um see what the oil does to it. It'd be interesting. That's going to be themed for a little while, carving flowers, because next week we're going to start the community carving, which I've been planning for ages. So, uh, cheers, Volano. Thanks, Celtic. Seven by seven. Oh, wow, that's pretty big. Um, I think it's some kind of. It's from a door frame. I think it's some kind of mahogany. It sort of acts like sapili, and sapili's kind of like mahogany as well, right? So, um, and then the front bit of wood is lime wood or basswood. Lindenwood, they're all kind of similar. So, and I painted it with watercolors. Oh, well, not really painted, more like, more like stained, really. Hmm. So now we've done one of these. And they're gonna sit like here and here to each other and there's going to be like a block of wood here so after I've carved this bit here to look more like this then we're going to cut it off there like this one's cut off then we're going to carve down these bits on the end to be dowels that are about an inch thick then we'll um, cut our piece of beach because it's going to be a piece of beach that goes in the bottom here um, I'll show you the piece of beach hang on a sec piece of beach so we're going to cut that down to have a, it's going to be a bottom platform and um, well those two bits will sit on and then uh, get out of there get out of there Achoo. and uh, yeah then we'll um, be able to see how they fit in there and then there'll be like a section going across I'm going to make a kind of platform that goes across here and connects at the top of these two and they'll have holes in the top so you can put tools down in the holes in the top. But for now, we've got to carve this one down, so let's do that. Let's do it. Tables of the five players and the two DMs. Twelve. Oh wowza. That's a lot of people. How do you deal with guests in D and D campaigns? Like, do you make a completely separate campaign just for like one night, 
One that they can, you know, do in one night or what? Or do they do they literally join and help you in an existing campaign or what? And then just like disappear after that, you know, after that one night. Guest starting to they come for a session or two. Oh, okay. Is this table for those Twitch streamers, Volna, or because didn't you make something for? Some Twitch channel that does D and D. It is okay. Oh, the DM screen. Yeah. Okay. What the really fancy one. With like the, they're like an octopus on it or something. See, I see. Although I made the other one, so look. Yeah, about as long. I think I just chopped off the rest of the log, so that's okay. But I might get my dividers so we can measure around this. Hey, Funk, how's it going? Oh yeah, yeah. DC came in the other day, and uh, he doesn't come in very often. He's he's come, well, he's come in twice, as far as I know. He's come into chat twice. And each time he's dropped loads of um, loads of subs. So he is he is the sub gifter. Started in January, and they were making payments. But COVID hit. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay, Von. Oh, cool. Say <laughs> say here. Here? Here. How do you want me to say it? Here. <laughs> How you doing, Spatter? Secret benefactor, yeah. Hey, Bodie, how's it going? Yeah, he's uh, been very generous. Uh, he did the same for Pete, Samuel Sculpture. Except in a big way. He's he's Pete's top sub-gifter by quite some margin, so... He's a very generous guy. Hell, 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 Hey, Maker Poo. Yeah, I hope you have a good day too. Thanks for dropping by. I hope all is well in Maker Foo land. <laughs> Spat, what are you trying to do? <laughs> you picking on me or something? In my posh voice, oh. Here. Over here. You taking the mick, bro? Huh? <sighs> hey, Bodie, how's it going? Still so far away, gotta clean it up, sand a lot, billing coat set. What kind of finish are you doing, Volna? <laughs> hey Colleen. Hey Renee. Oh really, Funk? Oh wow. You're right, what the hell are you on about? <laughs> Poster boy for posh. Oh yeah, I'm so posh. So posh. In my Instructables t-shirt and shorts. I don't know what type of shorts, what are they? Slazenger shorts. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm well known in posh circles. <laughs> Spot your phone, oh, okay. Oh yeah, I guess it would. I guess it would. So I'll put a couple of dots here. So I'm gonna figure out where I want the front to be. It's here somewhere. It's about there. Cheers, Funk. Yeah, it's actually uh, I'm really liking it. Because before I would like scrub. I had a drawer before that had all the bits in, and I had to like scramble through the drawer to find what I wanted. But um. Yeah, this is so much easier just to have all the stuff. It's easier for sharpening and stuff as well, you know. I need to do a lot more organisation. I still have loads of just little bits everywhere of stuff. But um, I'm slowly getting there, I think. I hope. <laughs> Suffolk equals posh. <laughs> well, not not if you go back to like old Suffolk. But yeah, true funk. Yeah, they're not all they're not clanging against each other in the drawer. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, not if you go to like old Suffolk or like typical like traditional Suffolk, which is like country. You know, if you, if there's a part of America that's all like farmland, and uh, people who talk in a way that it's quite hard to understand them, maybe that's what traditional Suffolk is like. But nowadays, yeah, there is Suffolk. There's quite a lot of affluent like uh, towns and stuff. Uh, Berry, um, there's places like Clare. There's also some kind of crappy places, but a lot of it's um, a lot of it's quite. Uh, there's quite a lot of posh people and retired people. Are ready, Vonar? Yeah, yeah. Storage is really hard to figure out. All right, Colleen, back away. Suffolk spiced. <laughs> I'm not even sure what that means. What does that mean? Yeah, since I've been doing the the carving, I found it kind of easier to organise in a way because I know the things I'm going to need for it. So, so there's stuff I can move out of here when I do a reorganisation day, which I probably need to do pretty soon. Now that the weather's got a bit cooler, I could probably do it. Then I can. Uh, Move a load of stuff from here to another shed or something, or you know, get rid of some stuff and organize this shed properly. So it's better, better than it was before. So, pub car park fights, <laughs> the local loose woman in the village. <laughs> That's a different Suffolk than the one I know, Funk. <laughs> You've been to somewhere interesting in Suffolk, maybe Ipswich, have you? Or Stowe Market. Bubinga tray. Yeah, Celtic. It has been too hot. I mean, I know you're in a different country, but yeah, it's been um, it's been crazy hot here. That's cool, Volinar. It's another one of Volinar's builds. Whoopsie! Come on now. You can do it. There you go. So I'm trying to do this with my left hand. I don't know why I'm not using my right hand. Whoopsie. Hey Randall, how you doing? Pretty much sums it up from what you've read. 
<laughs> and what have you read, Maker Fu? <laughs> you went to Manny Tra Oh, did you? Oh, okay. I really volna. Oh, bummer. I'm alright, cheers, Randall. I'm alright. You went hunting the Witchfinder General. Oh, did you? <laughs> Hey Tom, how you doing? Lamp working starter kit. Oh what, like glass stuff? I read the internet, yeah, alright. Alright. And what if I read about your part of Texas, make a food? What, what conclusions would I be able to draw from that? How would you sum up your, your area? Hundred <laughs> percent. That is the most beautiful place. Oh, okay. <laughs> Randall knows, and they do the best barbecue, right? That's what I've heard. Hula Hula's told me that. Pretty sure Randall's told me that before as well. So. That's cool, Tom. Making marbles, nice. That sounds cool. On Facebook, enjoy. <laughs> Always, especially if you make it, Randall. Oh, okay. It's like Suffolk with guns. <laughs> so you mean a very nice place to live, Funk? Is that what you're trying to say? Oh no, lots of farms in Texas. Lots of tractors. If so, then yeah, we're similar. Our local football team is even nicknamed the Tractor Boys, so. So go a little bit thinner in both directions. So let's go a little bit thinner. <laughs> fair enough, Funk. Fair enough. You're in the cotton area. Oh, okay, Randall. That's nice. Sounds pretty good. There you go. Then we're not so we're not so different after all. That's pretty close. Someone's getting there, not quite there yet. Metro, okay. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, quite similar here then. Although we don't really have, I mean, our biggest town, we don't have a city, like an official city, uh, in our county, so our biggest town is uh, Ipswich, which I don't particularly like it though, I think it's a little bit of a crud hole, a little bit rough. A nicer city I think is Bury St Edmund, is the one that I, which is the one I live right next to. It's smaller than Ipswich, quieter, yeah. Well, that's what people from Suffolk say, Funk, but... There's a bit of a Suffolk-Norfolk rivalry.
Is it funk? Is that is that true or? Because I actually don't know. Yeah, oh, interesting. Hey, Buck. Is it just a folk? <laughs> Don't know. How's it going, Buck? What's happening today? Really funk, oh wowza. And when's 1644, okay. Well, we used to have one of the biggest, um, there's a carving I'm doing upcoming. Uh, it's like a bit of a passion project, but also something for the portfolio. It's uh, to do with King Edmund, which is who Barrison Edmund is named after. And um, the monastery they had there in Barrison Edmunds was one of the biggest in the UK at one point and they had kings from all over come and visit it but then after King Henry you know changed to Church of England and all that business then I think it basically just uh, got destroyed or or something I don't know but there's, a, there's only like ruins left of it now remote today oh, okay Yeah, Exelon. Some people say that. Some people don't don't like this kind of noise, the mallet, but um you know. I mean this is this is woodworking, so if you're gonna be in here not expecting loud sound sometimes, then you might be in the wrong stream, you know. I can't really mute like every time I do it. And I've tried adding noise filters before, but I just think they sound weird. How they like, uh, you know, take the volume down and all that. I don't know. I don't like it anyway. Blocked in and can't get iced coffee. Brother-in-law. Oh, he's put his car in front of you. Are you funk <laughs> on a sunny? You're gonna wait for a sunny day. <sighs> okay, Buck, that's good. Hey, Brandon, how you doing? Yeah, I've used the rubber mallet before, but I don't really like it, funk. So yeah, we're out, we're back on the wood mallet. It just doesn't make the same kind of contact, you know. Right. It's sort of a bit bulky here. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take some of this down because it's a bit a bit bulky there. <coughs> Up super early. Yeah, how's it going, Brandon? Have you been uh you been able to do much wood turning and stuff? First world problems, yeah, hundred percent buck. I can't get my coffee. <laughs> Reverse, beep, beep, beep. Yeah. Still in an apartment, Brandon? Oh, okay. Hey, have you sp uh, Brandon, you spoken to um Yak lately? The only place I've seen him is on Instagram where he likes my posts sometimes. Apart from that, I, I haven't heard much about him. Googly eyes, yeah. We were thinking about making something like that. So maybe I'll make a mallet with the with the face on it, I don't know. That might be funny. Or did a plunger out and bit through a Dremel. Okay. Ah, okay, well I yeah, wow. Doing some carving. Oh yeah? What have you been carving? Oh yeah, I thought he'd been building the new workshop. 
I just didn't know if he'd like finished it or anything. Yeah. Yeah, there used to be a streamer. Actually, Brandon used to stream as well back in the day. He used to stream wood turning. And also one of Brandon's friends called uh, Yak Branson. He used to stream as well. Wood turning. Before the days of Texas Hoover, the wood turner. There were a couple of other wood turners, weren't they? They've since had other things happen, so. Yeah. But maybe they'll be back one day. Plunge route. Oh, did you want to know? Oh, that's a good idea, though. Yeah. Yeah, that can. If you like chiseling too much, can definitely hurt your hands, yeah. Was, um, right, so we've done. Whoops. We've done most of the stuff. I'm now gonna do what we did last time, which was quite fun, and break all the bits off the bottom here, so. This is a really satisfying part now. I will show you. Breaking all these chunks off. Because you know, because the wood's going up this way, the grain's going up, we can see it here. Look. You can see all the lines going up there. Don't know how well you can see it there. Look. So that means it's really easy to split from this direction. Nice and dry, you. Yep. Oh, yeah, it's been drying for a long time. It's probably about oh, four years, maybe. It's from a local woodland. They actually sell. I talk about this quite a lot. But for people who haven't heard about it before, they sell ash logs as like a coppice product. And coppicing is when you cut a tree back like really harshly and it grows back and then you cut off the limbs from it then you cut it back really harshly again etc 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 so they do to these ash trees which is what this is this is ash so this is a piece of ash that's come from coppicing so they will have cut this ash tree all the way down to the ground pretty much and made a stool which is like a kind of imagine <clears throat> imagine this is the ground here then the ash tree sort of comes up in loads of branches because they keep cutting it down so it's like loads of individual trunks kind of and then after about like 10 or 20 years they cut those trunks off and they're about this size you know like sort of three inches diameter something like a uh, seven centimeters something like that and they have loads and loads and loads of those stalls in the woodland and they just keep cutting them back every 10 or 20 years or however often they do it. It's, it's something like that. Not about 20 years, 15, 20 years. And they've been doing that since the year 12 something. So quite a long time. It's basically an ancient tradition in that, in that woodland. So I think that's pretty cool. So everything that is made with these particular ash logs has that link that link to the past, you know. Yeah, I'll show you a picture in a sec. The place is called Bradfield Woods. It's fairly close to me. Let's just saw this off. Switch to side cam. I've got to reposition this one. And I'll show you these things I'm talking about. Had a ping on one bit, yeah. So 
So here you go, this is what it looks like when it's cut back. Whoops, wrong one. This one. So you see the big picture, that's what it looks like when it's cut back. So that's what they call an ash stall. Uh, this is kind of what they look like. So you can see those limbs. That's actually a lot bigger than the ones I get. Um, the ones I get are perhaps more like this. So that's that's a stall, basically. This kind of little clump. It's all, it's all one tree. It's just because they keep cutting it back. It keeps growing back in little branches. And they let all those little branches grow into trunks. And then cut them off. There's another one there. Look at all that burl as well. So let me find the find the website of Bradfield Woods, and we'll be able to see what how long they've been doing it for. I think it's since twelve something. So have a look. There you go. You see it there? Bradford Woods is a working wood that is unique as it has been under continuous traditional coppice management since 1252. So what's that like? Close to 800 years? Fulfilling local needs of firewood and hazel products. So Yeah, basically, Buck. Those, those ash stools have been there for hundreds and hundreds of years. So they just keep cutting them down and letting them grow up again. And cutting down and grow up again. So... I mean, I, I I guess the trees maybe have a limit on them, but I don't I don't know, unless maybe the coppicing just helps them rejuvenate. I'm not really sure, but um, yeah. So they've they've been there for a long time. But like I said, I don't because they do call them ancient stool, ancient ash stools. So they must have been there for a while. But I don't know how long, you know, like you say, I don't know how long they can be like that for. But it's uh, pretty cool. Yeah, you did funk. I remember you saying before. Copper seven it formed there. Yeah. yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Daisugi. What's that then? Exelon. I don't think I've heard of that. Daisugi? Is that a, a Japanese thing? Well, that's pretty good. I just glued some leather on there and my jaws for the first time. Let's see how it fares though. I haven't left it to dry for too long. Maybe how long? About half an hour maybe? Hmm. Oh yeah, funk. Totally, yeah. Older than, yeah, the... Yeah. Older than when the USA got its independence, I guess. Tree down to trunk. Yeah, that's it. That's the same thing. Excellent, same thing. Yeah, hang on a sec. There you go. It's back a thousand years, yeah. Anything's older than the US, well, yeah. <laughs> Let's have a look. Okay, cool, yeah, same thing. It looks it looks more dramatic though, but yeah. Did it the same kind of thing. I might just check, hang on. How old are the ash stools in Redfield Woods? Oops. Some ash coppice stools in Bradfield Woods are thought to be over a thousand years old. As a coppice stool a shoots regenerate, their density bushy growth provides excellent cover for migrant songbirds such as garden warbler, blackcap, and willow warbler. So that's pretty cool. So some of them are thought to be over a thousand years old, so that's even older than they say on the on thing. Me too, Exelon. Windsor Park's over a thousand year old oaks. Really funk, cool man. Yeah, there's some seriously old trees. I think actually the oldest tree that they've dated so far is in the US. Um, or last I heard anyway, some is it bristle cone pine or something? Might have been California or something. Let me have a look. 
Yeah, here you go. It says, until 2013, the oldest individual tree was Methuselah. 4,845-year-old Great Basin Bristlecone Pine in California. It says, until 2013, does that mean it's an older one? Oh, good lord, so many things. Go away. That's making my it's all this all these videos and adverts and crap are making my laptop strain. Go away. I'll have to go off that page. Okay. Jeez. We have old stuff, yeah. Oh, those cowrie trees, yeah, they're cool. Prometheus, okay, excellent. Great bristle cone, great basin bristle cone in Nevada. All right, cool. Thirteen point five meter circumference trunk, yeah, that's pretty big. <laughs> it's like some of those. The trunk on some of those redwoods in the U.S. is crazy. Hey, Mr. Frightful. Four. I've got a trunk on that. How you doing, Mr. Frightful? Maybe Exelon, I don't know, yeah, maybe. And that's just where we know about. Well, yeah, true, true. Feels pretty tight in there. Let's. Uh, I wanna. I don't know. I'm gonna use a knife for this. What I need. I might need to buy one. I need like a tiny draw knife would be excellent. Like you can imagine having a tiny draw knife like this. That would be excellent. That would help me with lots of things. So I think I might get one of those. I have seen them. They do exist. So. No, this is still part of that uh, sculpture stand. Uh, Sculpture Tool Organizer. It's for a clay sculptor. Patagonian Cypress in Chile. 3,600. That's such a crazy... Just when you think about how old that is, it's ridiculous. I have Mr. Frightful, and I was thinking that might work. I'll, I'll give that a shot first. <clears throat> yeah, tiny spoke shave, but I would like to have a, a tiny draw knife as well, so I think that would be pretty good. Uh, yeah, like, you think... Like, what, the Romans or what, like... 2,000 years old, right? So that tree was like started growing 1,650 years before like the Roman Empire, right? Which is ridiculous to think about. Older than most, yeah, older than most civilizations, yeah. I think there's another fact that it's not to do with trees, but it is to do with um, history. Another fact that always blows my mind that I heard recently, and that was that the ancient Egyptians were as old, were as ancient to the Romans as the Romans are to us. Which is uh, something really crazy to think about, I think. Put handles on the pins of the blade and use it naked. Handles on the pins of the blade. What, and a spoke shave, you mean, Mr. Frightful? Actually, you know what? I've actually got some spoke shave blades. Maybe I could use one of those. But they're not they're not quite I wanted to have like a thin like a thin blade, you know, I think that would be cool. That'd be pretty crazy, Exelon. <laughs> not being able to move would kinda of suck though. Hey Polo. Bounces into the chat. Naked. <laughs> Wow, yeah, Buck. Now that's weird. That's really weird. Closer in time to the building of the first pizza hut than the building of the pyramids. That's weird. 
Oh, really, Funk? Interesting. Well, yeah, true, excellent, true. Goat yourself, Buck. I did not bounce into the chat. I should hope not, either, Potter. This is a family-friendly stream. We don't do naked bouncing. <laughs> no sound? Oh, really? Oh, holy moly, I've done it again. Well, I haven't done it. OBS has done it. Thanks, Potter. Sorry about that. Alright, yeah, let's get the spike shade and try that. I've got to be quite accurate with it, so when we shave it down to the rough size, I will just use a knife after that. OBS! How was the rest of your stream, Potter? I kind of got quiet towards the end because I was basically just falling asleep, so... Not because of you, because it was late, I would like to mention. Pogo, what, pretty, pretty good? Good. Well, you got a point, Mr. Frightful, you got a point. It's not Naked Wednesday, no, it's... something Friday? Fancy Friday? Sorry about that. Let's uh, let's take you down a bit. I'm going to change your camera. Hang on, because we're going to be down at this level for a while. So let me um, switch where this goes quickly. So you can fall asleep. That can't go too far. <laughs> That's crazy, Buck. Yeah. <laughs> Fully clothed Friday, yes. Frumpy Friday. Pie, thanks for the follow. But uh, oh, almost. There you go. But uh, but uh, da da. I'll show you again for those of you who didn't see it, because I know we were carving this a lot earlier in the week. This is the. Uh, finished carving. I am going to oil this part, so we did that at the end of the stream. I don't know what it's going to turn out like, but it'll be interesting. I tested the oil on my test piece, which was this, and the colours didn't run or anything, so it uh, should be okay, hopefully. Oh, the other view of the bot. Ooh. Okay, Polaron. Cool. You got the side view sorted done. All right. Cool. Shame we ate them all. Yeah. Actually, Mr. Frightful, I don't know if you've heard, but there's they're adding to the A4 or they're changing something about the A14, the the carriageway in Cambridge, and uh, they've had to start some massive archaeological dig because they've found like. Mammoth remains and Roman, uh, like you know, uh, traces of like Roman civilizations, Anglo Saxons, Vikings, and stuff. They found loads and loads of stuff there, so they started some massive archaeological dig apparently, which is pretty cool. Well, the fountain can't go too far. <laughs> oh. yeah, it's fairly slow, excellent, but yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah. They found loads of stuff there. Let's see if I can find it. Um, Cambridge A14. News. Uh, there you go. All the ancient discoveries found by archaeologists working on the A14. So there you go. Here's a couple of 
couple of geezers with some mammoth stuff. He's got a mammoth tusk. And I don't know, what have they got? Some kind of bones or something? Oh, woolly rhino skulls. Woolly rhinos. Imagine woolly rhinos in the UK. That's such a weird thought. And woolly mammoths as well, really. But... Oh man, that's another thing that's killing my computer. Thank you. Cheers, Disciple. Thanks for the resub. Appreciate that, sir. How you doing? I thought that's two years, Disciple. Two years of loyal support. Thanks a lot, Disciple. That means a lot. Oh, for a 3D model. What's it for then, Polar? What are you gonna make it? What are you gonna like make it into? Eight frozen really, really excellent. Would it have even been edible? Bouncy bot. I'm oh, good, thanks, Disciple. Oh, yeah, let's have this Jaffa. So while I'm scoffing this, look, I'll show you. This is the stuff they found so far, look. <laughs> Very good, Polymer. Very good. So, 11 old woolly mammoth tusks and 3 complete woolly rhino skulls, all dating back to nearly 100,000 years ago. Three Neanderthal hinges between four and five thousand years old. Seven prehistoric burial grounds, mostly from the Bronze Age, Fifteen Iron Age, and Roman settlements. Three Anglo-Saxon settlements and one deserted medieval village. And around fifteen thousand objects such as coins, brooches, and ironwork. Over five hundred human burials and cremations. More than six tons of pottery and almost five tons of animal bone. They must have been digging up a hell of a big area to find all that stuff. 40 different, oh right, yeah. I don't know, Mr. Frightful. It's pretty cool, though. The age of the universities, yeah, aren't, isn't there like one in Iran, or... I thought Iran or Iraq had like the oldest um, university or something. Oldest being in uh, Bologna. When? 1088, yeah, that's crazy. Having never been out of operation. Borrow pits? What's borrow pits, Mr. Frifle? Hmm. I guess they are funk. Makes sense. Yeah. Heavy metal dude. All oh, right. Okay. Oldest current. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Oxford ten ninety six. Wow. On operation. Yeah. So ten ninety six is thirty years after the Norman conquest. You know when William the Conqueror came over to UK and basically took over. So I wonder if that was a, a Norman thing. I guess it was, right? Maybe. I don't know. It's only 30 years after, so... Oh, actually, I'm not entirely sure what happened after 1066. It's just we always hear loads about 1066 because it's the Battle of Hastings. See at the moment, but it's just we're trying to get all this material off here. Well, <laughs> yeah. In the UK, yeah, we hear a lot of that. You know, you hear, you learn a lot about it at school because the uh, Bayer tapestry and everything. It's crazy, yeah. 
Yeah, oh yeah, totally bucked. Yeah, still teaching, yeah. <laughs> Hello, presents. I am W. William here to conquer. Good blimey! It's a bloody raid! Hey, Rene. Hello, Mother. Hey, Helen. How you doing? <laughs> I will just scroll up in a sec and read the other messages. Hey, Sam. How you doing? How was the screen? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I grew up in Europe, <laughs> where the history comes from. Is that any his odd quote, is it? Defend. Yeah, he's good. William the Beer, as he was before he conquered England, made a prefab fort. Did he? No, really? Came over with the first ships. They set it up one day, much to the surprise of the locals. Is that true, Funk? That sounds crazy. Dealing with the Reformation and a bit about the Magna Carta. Oh, really, Colin? I didn't know the Magna Carta related anything to the US at all. That's alright, sir. What did you make? That's a good one to cipher, I like that. Mallet arm. <laughs> Fist in the other hand. It was before I cared, but like a thousand years. <laughs> like your flat back predates Oxford. Yep, well now you know. <laughs> That's really cool, Funk. I mean, it's really kind of smart as well, right? Even though it would have been a hell of a lot of effort to carry it over. If you can get a fort, like, you know, put up straight away as soon as you get there. That's, that's flipping smart. Proto-US democracy. <laughs> uh, tried it out, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, that's an interesting uh, way of looking at it. Looking at it. Dang, nab it. Made it in France, took it apart. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the UK and said, see that? <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, not a huge thing. No, but still, still funk. You know. It's pretty cool. Hey, Grump, how's it going? Hey, San, what did you do in your stream? I think I have... Do I have a hole for this size? No, I don't. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make an inch, an inch hole in this block. Then we're gonna uh, keep testing till we get close to that, and then probably take a knife and do the final adjustment to the knife. I do have this one thing. Let me show you. I don't know if it will fit around this. Uh, where is it? Here it is. So I bought this yonks ago. Um, I haven't sharpened it or anything since I got it. Maybe we could do that today and test it out. It'll be fun. Yeah, so it, it's a tenon. It's an adjustable tenon cutter, right? So you adjust these screws to whatever size you want. And then there's a blade there. See that blade? Goes on the in whoops, on the inside there. And then the idea is that you adjust this to the right width you want and then you get the stick or whatever in there and then you twist this around to cut it. It's basically a plane and it makes um, you know, makes things round. But I've not sharpened it since I got it. I have tried tried it out and obviously it's not very good because it needs to be sharpened, but why don't we uh, why don't we sharpen it in a little bit? That'd be cool. We can do that. Hmm. 
Made a card and wired up silk flowers. A straw hat. A small straw hat, what's that for? Parliament. Oh, I really hate it. Um, like Prime Minister's questions and all that. I hate that. It's just basically loads of people jeering. That's basically all you hear all the time. I can't stand that crap. Oh, really, Mr. Rifle? Cool. It's not for me, Grump. It's for a, a clay sculptor. <laughs> Don't worry, look, you can see my stuff <laughs> is all thrown there, so. <laughs> That's it, Mr. Frightful, you got it. Put them in the organizer, then throw the organizers under the bench. Yep. Oh, just for decoration. Oh, okay, okay. The Senate there is even worse. I haven't seen much of that, but yeah. Yeah, maybe Mr. Frightful. Mama. Mama Jen. Right, let's uh, drill this hole in this. In this thingy. Well, I might, I might not make it an inch big. I might go smaller, but um, it'd be nice to see how big the the inch the inch one will be. So I know if it's the size I want. So let's let's do that. First. Inch, which is about twenty-five millimeters. Oh yeah, yeah. You did for um. Oh, crap! I haven't seen her on lately, actually. Why can't I remember her name? Splatterbrain Studios, but that's that's her other name. Peach Hip. Peach Hip, yeah. So if it stops there immediately, yeah. Two mile conga line voting method. <laughs> yeah, it's a good way to describe it. Hey JC, how you doing? Peach, yeah. Is she oh okay. Oh, I hope she comes back on. It was always always cool to see the stuff she was making. Especially the dodos. Everyone loved those dodos. Yes, I've seen some of those, Disciple. <laughs> I'm alright, JC. I'm alright. She's planning on it? Oh, good. Actually, Polaron, weren't you going to get one of the dodos? Or am I imagining stuff? Oh, you have several audio? Oh, okay. I'm well, thanks, JC. I'm well. I've been I've been keeping up with your. Uh... If you guys don't know, well, actually, let's do two. Because first, let's do uh, San, who just raided. If you're into, uh... whoops, not Unicron, Unicorn, Unicron's different. <laughs> if you're into uh, card making and flower arranging, San's actually a trained. Uh, Flower Ranger, so she used to do that for work uh, before she had her kids and become a stay-at-home mum. So, um, yeah, she used to work in a flower shop, and then she did a lot of uh, like private work as a, a flower ranger or florist. Florist is probably the, the better word. Um, and she also does lots of card making and crafting, stuff like that. Uh, stuff with beads, diamond painting, all that kind of stuff. So that's what that's what Sam gets up to. Um, and, oh wow. Hello. Oh, there we go. Wow, so that website is dreadful. Ready, Grump? A couple of saber scars. Sounds interesting. A flower ranger. <laughs> No <laughs> comment. <laughs> uh, there's no reason for that to go away. What? Chuck a couple of chuck a couple of swords on the floor. Let them let them go at it. Yeah, and if you don't know uh, JC, is it Jay Campanella? Is that how you? 
There you go. Uh, he does these really cool illustrations of like <sighs> they're they're female warriors, but they're kind of you know what do you see? They're they're fuller figured, but they all look uh they all look awesome. They're like proper warriors. Oh, she's not so full of figured. There's a chicken. Wasn't expecting. Wasn't expecting that. Unexpected chicken. So, these could all be quite easily written into a story, I think. Sorry, JC. <laughs> Legislation by leg wrestling. <laughs> That's one way to sort it out. 70s pulp mag, yeah. Yeah, they do. Agreed. Dang, that it. There we go. I'm going to show you some of sand stuff now. Um, let's see. She's got work in progress. Does she have finished work? Nope. Oh, does it show your projects? Nope. Where's all science for our latest projects? There you go, here's a good example. Whoops. It's a good example. Alright, so. Hey, Colleen. Welcome back. Unlurky. Some of sand stuff. I'll try and find some of her flower arrangements. So like I said, that's what she was uh, that's what she was trained in. So I think there's some of the some of the cooler look really cool. I can find some. She's also done some of the dreaded quilling, which Colleen was swearing about the other day. Aha, here we go. Yes, yeah, so there's some sands. Flower I'm ranging. Uh, sand is my sister, if you don't know, by the way. Unicorn sand. Okay. So. Yeah. Uh, not 100% sure, Disciple. Why is that? Do you have... Are you taking me out? Yeah. Actually, I'm going to do this a bit further to the edge. Trying to do it further the edge to avoid cracking. You know what it's done, don't you? It's cracked. I thought these other holes around it might make it crack, but in fact, going near the edge has made it crack. I think it'll be okay. I think it might just be the top. Guess we'll see in a minute. Hey Tryon, going alright? How you doing? 
You're hungry, yeah. I don't know, I've got some uh, tortilla, like, wrap things I need to eat. Because they're kind of, uh, you know, they're on the way out, so... I might just, like, get some chicken and some salad and stuff and wrap them up in that. You know, have something like that. Honey Nut Cheerio is nice. Yeah, Concord isn't fine for ages, has it? Like, the sort of mid-90s or something, isn't it? Or something? I don't know. Doing good? Good, good. Fish tacos? I don't think I've got any fish. I did have, but I've eaten it. I had some, uh, what was it? It was cod or haddock, I can't remember now. Oh yeah, it's only the top, just a little bit split for the top, that's all right. Good, good. There we go, now coming through the bottom. Doesn't need to be neat, so I don't care. Now it comes through the bottom. There we go. Let's get the brush on this. It's, looks like splinter veal. Right, that's 25 that one, so let's write that on there. Ah. Homemade elk. Wait. Literally elk? Or is that just like the name of something? Cod and Haddock, yeah, they are pretty nice. Even better from the chip shop. I'm just uh, adding a hole to this board, Tryon, and we're gonna get these, the ends of these to fit through the, the uh, 25mm hole I just made. This one's 25. Which is about an inch, 25 millimeters. It's pretty close to an inch. That's pretty much, pretty much exactly the same. Probably give or take a very small measurement. See, I've got my leather on the jaws now, so that came uh, came in the poster there. I got some leather scraps, so that's pretty good. Hey, you can fidget, how's it going? Literally elk, wow. Nice, that sounds cool, Grump. There you go, Tryon. It's almost almost an inch there, almost an inch. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have, I've been planning on doing this for a really long time. And because I made the, um, you know, the carving board thing, these bits that go against the wood, I wanted to put leather on these because it gets kind of clamped against the wood. So not only to protect the edge of the wood a little bit, but also, um, you know, have more grip as well. So I thought, well, since I've got to get it for a couple of reasons, I might as well get it. I try to spend as little money as possible uh, on things if I don't need them. So. circle on the bottom of that. I can find the centre of that. I got, um, yeah, it's was from eBay. I don't think it was a ten, maybe a little bit more, maybe like twelve quid or something. Oh, ready to fidget? What, what were you, um, what were you making? I'll show you what I got, Mr. Frightful. We've got, quite a lot of it is in this vice here. This is one big bit, then there's another big bit here, so the two largest bits I put in the vice. Um, where did I put that stuff here? This is the rest of it. So we got all this. You know, some of them are you know, they're all really odd shapes because they're scraps, but they're really, really useful for stuff I want to do. So 
that will cover those bench dogs easily and then I'll have loads left over as well. So, so just another another upgrade. Yeah, it's already it's gripping this way better. And of course, you know, we're not harming the, the wood by getting it in there really tight and it's gripping way better than usual, so I'm very glad about that. Flying saucer for the monthly challenge. What's that then? Whose monthly challenge? Yours or Hey pirate, how's it going? Paddle strop. I've got this one, but I don't know, I mean I, the leather. Dunno, do you think that leather's a bit worn out? I dunno. There's still a lot of thickness there. Dunno. Have you, Grump? Nice. Ten acres. Deer, turkey, rabbit, grouse, pheasant, duck and goose. And eight lakes. Wait, do you mean that's that's all on your land, do you mean, Grump? All yours? Oh, did they configure it? Oh, okay. I hadn't heard about that. Okay, I'll have a look. Let's have a look. Ah, cool. You meant it from something spalted. It's alright, I found it. I found ya, I found ya. What, what is it? What kind of wood is that? Spalted, oh, black, black limber. I've never heard of black limber. And spalted maple. Where does Black Limber come from? That's cool though. They're making a crater. <laughs> what are you on about? And Colleen, five seconds. She's unbannable, unfortunately, but... Hey, Ray! <laughs> Want to adopt an adult male child? <laughs> uh, uh. Oh, okay, Grump. Bear as well, oh wow. Africa probably, yeah. I was thinking that. You need to self-ban. <laughs> Looks alright, okay. Uh, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Some on the bench, yeah. A profiled one, yeah. I probably need that actually, Mr. Fright, for a profiled one. Yeah, I should probably do that. I've already got five of those, Grump. <laughs> one more won't hurt. Ray's useful. Ray Ray has a farm. So he'll he'll be useful. Taking advantage of a typo. Oh, man. Oh, Makers and Craters group. Oh, good lord. That's what it was. Claps, the slow claps. Oh, yeah, there's snow, yeah. Raid of the Night Snow. Grump, are you anywhere near, um... Are you anywhere near Hula? I wonder if you're going to his um, thing. Uh, oh man, why well, can't I remember it? Hula Palooza. Hula has a, a meeting that he uh, sort of arranges in his workshop, or at least sort of in his house and that, where he has some of the viewers come over. And they started it, I think they started it uh, last year. Obviously they couldn't do it this year. Um, or I don't think they did anyway. Um... And he's got another one coming up in 2021, I think Feb February or March, something like that. Plenty would love the snow, yeah. Hey, Stink. Yeah, I'm alright. How you doing? 
Sorry, pirate. No, we only do we only do one per stream now. I did five per stream when I first started it, and I think all five were used, so that's why I was like, oh, okay. Better just do one. <laughs> Northern Michigan. Oh, oh yeah, it is. Michigan's like Great Lakes kind of territory, right? Other side of the country, yeah. Oh, bummer. You good, Stink? Good. Just making these um these two uh, sculptor tool holder things. I'm just turning the bottom of this into a dowel so we can get it to fit in a 25mm uh, hole. And then I'm going to cut the bottom platform for it. Then we'll put them in temporarily and measure up the other bits that we have to fit on there. And we'll get making those as well. Actually, you know what? I had I had some uh, I have some like stencil things up here. I wonder if I have a twenty-five mil hole in there. Is that a hole? Cheers, Mr. Frightful. Who <laughs> made it to southern Texas? Yeah, it's pretty damn big. Forty minus forty. Oh, wowza! Thanks, Stink. Hey, plane. How you doing? Ah, you know what? I think I do have one. There you go. I bought these a little while ago. Uh, particularly for this, which is a French curve, or a set of French curves, um, which I'm going to be like, uh, I don't know if they're worked out on like the golden ratio or something, or the, the Fibonacci scale or something, they're going to be curves that are quite kind of pleasing, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so that you, people use them for like, you know, when finishing off corners on furniture and stuff like that. I don't really do much furniture or anything, but I thought they would be useful. And look. They are useful today. Who's laughing now? Eh? 25. Right, 24, 25, this one, is it? Yeah. There we go. I could, Mr. Fry, but I have to know where the centre is. I don't know where the centre is. This is just like ten times simpler, I think. Anyway, I don't know. Battle! Battle! Yeah. Cutting little wood houses. Oh, okay, interesting. Wait, the sellers are asking for those. I. Uh... Balls! <laughs> The only temperature and yeah, Fahrenheit and Celsius meet. Face is laughing now, exactly. Exactly. As if you do exclamation mark and O O O, you get uh you get the ooh guy. Your fingers just laughed. <laughs> yeah, they are clean, yeah. Yeah. They're for Deke. If you guys don't know Freaky Deke, let's shout out Freaky Deke. Forty-one dollars for eight. Do you mean just like bits of wood cut out in the shape of a house, like a silhouette? Freaky Deke. You know him, Stink? Yeah, he's cool. He's uh, currently making. I'll show you actually. Let's go on his Instagram. Freaky.deek. Oh, what is it? Oh, he does. Yeah, I was just thinking, for a second, I thought he didn't have a picture of it. Here we go. So here's, um, like a time lapse of the 
It's hard to see it there. If you look in the bottom right, you can see just how big it is. The bottom right of that video. Oh, it's gone now. Oh, you can see it now. It's about, um, I think Deke said about two and a half feet tall. Something like 80 something centimeters. So, yeah, you can see it there. Look. You see his hand on the leg. If you look at his hand on the leg, it's pretty damn big. Um, and a lot of his sculptures are like that. So he's, he's getting me to make this uh, sculpture holder for him. So he's got Nemesis here from uh, Resident Evil. And then he had, uh, where's his Batman one? Here we go, here's Batman. He made a kind of gritty looking Batman. And he made a Joker as well. Where's Joker? Oh, here's Tweety Pie. And he's done a Marvel and the Martian, but I don't think he's finished that yet, so that's probably not on there. Where's Joker? I can't see Joker anywhere. He made this really cool, like, a uh, cyborg with, like, a light up spine. It's really cool. He's done some awesome stuff. Oh, there's Joker. There you go, let's go to this one. It's got examples of a lot of his stuff. So. Uh... Yeah, and he streams on Thursday and. Is it Thursday and Saturday usually, I think? He does other days sometimes, but usually it's Thursday and Saturday. I think. A hundred? Oh, wowza. That's a lot, though. And posters included. Oh, okay. Play-Doh. Yeah, it's like it's like clay. It's uh, polymer clay, I think. I think so. Like uh, uh, Sculpey, if you know Sculpey, Super Sculpey. One hundred and fifty for a six-foot blanket ladder. Yeah. Oh yeah, I saw that buck. Yeah. Amazon Handmade. Ah, oh, okay, plane. Cool. You got a picture of it. Yeah, cool. Cheers, Buck. So here's uh, the guy that Buck just mentioned. I don't know how you say his name. Is it Manke? Manke? I don't know how you say his name. But, yeah, he's uh, he's been making that, which is pretty damn cool. Pretty amazing, actually. His isn't polymer, oh, okay. I know, I was talking about Deke before, but... What is that, then, the clay he's using, then? Do you know, or...? Monster clay, maybe? Oh, no, monster clay is polymer, isn't it? Oh, it is monster clay. Oh, I thought I thought that was polymer clay. He'll cast it, then reuse. Oh, so that's that's like modelling clay, then. All right, plane, see you later. Have fun. Okay, I didn't realise that. I thought monster clay was um, stuff that got, you know, hardened or whatever. But it's just for making casts or whatever, is it? Alright, Grump. Thanks for coming. Have a good day. I'll catch you another time, maybe. Shows the frame and all. Okay. Oil-based. Yeah. Melts when heated. Okay. Hey, SBD. How you doing? Yeah, I saw someone. Actually, I was in Chris's chat. It, well, it was fairly recently, maybe about a week ago. Someone came in and asked something. Like, they've been making a sculpture for ages. From some kind of clay. I can't remember what it was. And they said to him, like, how long do I have to bake it for? And he was like, uh, well, if you bake it, it's going to turn into a puddle, so. But I don't, I don't know what it was, but that sounded pretty, um. Oh. Oh, there you go. <laughs> There's the one that Colleen's talking about. <laughs> Wow, that really sucks. How you doing, SBD? Monster mud, cement slurry. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was that's the one, Colleen. Yeah, their first sculpture. Yeah. Oh man. Oh, that sucks. That that one small act could like put you off from sculpting forever. If it was your first sculpture, you know. Especially if you spent a long time on it. Oh, 
Oh, did you stink? What kind of bench? A different person. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. Oh, wowzers. So you had two people in a day ask about that. Procrastinating is ever SPD. Fair enough. Yeah, I do as well, Mr. Frightful. I spend a lot of time researching stuff. Puddles and stinking your oven out, yeah. Alright, it's very close. Need some very small adjustments, so we use the knife now. Let's turn this light off, I don't need that anymore. Okay. Modern bench? Okay. Hey, Fire, how you doing? I saw you in uh, Polarin's last night, right? So, so this is where that little draw knife would come in handy, because I'm using this knife for two hands now. Which is not particularly smart, but you know. We'll probably just do some whittling, actually. Let's do some... Do it this way around. Yeah, I've seen a couple of places where they sell those little draw knives, so I'll probably get one of those, I think, because that will help with lots of uh, sculpture type stuff. Okay, so I kind of tapered it, but not quite got it to fit in there yet. Yeah, 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 Pollerin has good streams. Did you funk? What? Do you mean on a video or something? Or are you walking around and saw that? thinking about using that tool wasn't I but I just can't don't see the point now. I will sharpen that up one day though, I think that'll be handy. Oh have you fire? Oh wow sir. Oh yeah, following since twelfth of July last year. Oh man. <laughs> Fire, what do you stream by the way? I take it you stream something because you got 2,000 followers. Alright, Funk. Oh, wowza. Sounds a bit crazy. Hocus Pocus. Oh, really, Mr. Frightful? What, what were you looking for? Oh, the book, the spell book. Oh, really, Polarin? Cool. <laughs> ah, so we forced you. Excellent. One of us. Okay, we're getting there. Balls. Ah, uh, okay. Well, what did you use to stream? And if you were to do it again, what would you do? Same thing or, or something else? No, 
it's going in there a bit better now. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sounds, sounds like an interesting stream, but... <laughs> I know that's not what you meant. <laughs> Variety of games. <laughs> Colleen thought the same thing. Jeez, Colleen. Jeez. <laughs> Some programming. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Miss playing games with Lissa, yeah. Yeah, is there anything coming up, Polaron, that you can co op? <laughs> no wonder you stopped. Twitch must have suspended you for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's cool. What kind of games did you play? What kind of games do you play? I'm guessing you probably still play games. I know we do woodworking, but you know, probably almost everyone in here is a gamer, I would say. Not everyone, I doubt, but almost everyone, I guess. Oh, there you go, that's pretty good. That is a pretty good fit. There you go. <laughs> it wasn't that kind of strange. <laughs> Minecraft, okay. Oh, really, Polaron? Oh, intoxicated to stay on task. That probably made the stream funny, though. Or funny er. <laughs> They're the reasons for TOS, yeah. <laughs> well, at least she was making something, Pollen. Jeez. don't know actually the way that that is the bottom bit is probably going to be this will be cut off I think because that might be too far in I don't know though we'll, we'll see I might as well carve this all to 25 mil and then we can see <laughs> not not helping, sir. Sorry, I apologise. Oh, it's the strap. Which bit? The middle part? The middle bit, yeah. This is my best guess based on the edge you saw in the picture. The weaver's tighter with a deeper V shape. Ah, oh, okay. So what, are you, you going to remake it? Or... Mr. Frightful's doing a copy of the Hocus Pocus. Um, what's the spell book called again, Mr. Frightful? It has a name, doesn't it? A specific name. I don't know if you wrote in the... No, you didn't. The 
beach itself is about, uh, about an inch deep, maybe. So that looks close to an inch. See the mark there. Manual of Witchcraft and Alchemy, aka book. Did they say it in the film or something? I haven't seen it for so long. Yeah, it's a bit of an inch. Yeah, about 2.5. Is that enough? I think that'll be enough. Yeah. So now we just want to make it neat. Well, the part above it neat anyway, or neater. trouble here because there's a bit of a knot there. something there that I can see I want to get out of the way so that's a pencil mark on that. The rest is good so let's get that out of there. There we go. This bit is just a little bit higher than the rest. There we go. So there's one done. So we've just got to make this one look the same. We have to do a lot of smoothing here still, so it's still a bit lumpy. And uh, so let's get the spoke shave on it first. In fact, I might just uh, chip some of this stuff out of the way. How did the other one? I used the scraper. Let's have a look.
Tunica, it's pretty good. This thing has been really useful since I got it. The guy I uh, saw using it was a guy on um, YouTube called Rag and Bone Brown. He's in Norfolk actually. And uh, he recommended it for stripping like old finish shot stuff, like paint and stuff like that. And that's one of the reasons I got it in the first place. Um, but it's become more useful for shaping stuff, so. It's really handy. I'd like to get something similar, but maybe, unless I can get another attachment for it with a curve on it, that would be excellent if I could get something like that. That would be so useful. I suppose I could make my own one or something, if I had to. Bit of old saw blade or something. They sell those tips in different sizes, that would be awesome. I'll have to look. Be very, very handy. I should probably drink. scrapers that are, um, I don't want to say circular, like curved on one end. Which would also be handy, so I might get some of those as well. But this tool is perfect, so it's just like a tiny blade and you can put a lot of pressure on it, you know. You can put your hand down there if you want and really scrape hard. is holding about 10 times better than it was before. thing about it as well if you scrape on the edge. I suppose it would be good to have those corners like rounded over but then they're probably good for getting into well for getting into corners I guess is probably why they're shaped like that. Because I'm using it more for this. Maybe I can get another blade and shape it to my liking or something. I don't know. Let's see. Pretty good. All right, Buck, no problem. Hope those meetings go well. If that's a possibility. A little lump at the top. Uh, spoke shave around that a little bit like we did the other one then we'll draw our circle on then we'll trim it down and then we will have our two 
pieces, oh I don't know how close these are. I'll have to stand them up next to each other afterwards and see uh, see how close they are to each other height wise. Because obviously I want them to be the same or, or close to the same height, you know. higher and one lower, I mean there's no, no reason you couldn't, but for this particular design I want to have them the same height. Draw a circle on there. Not 25 mil, which is this one. I suppose I could use the scraper for this as well, really, rather than the knife. Maybe that would work better, I don't know. Okay, so the bottom just about fits in there because it's just so slightly tapered, but the rest... Hey, Remo, how are you doing? It is kind of. I think most people have said that, actually, Remo. It's, um... They're uh, tool holders, so they're going to be pushed into a piece of wood. So not not this piece, but imagine you know this is the piece it's going into. They're going to be going in like that. Nope. I uh, I drilled a big hole down the centre with an auger bit. Uh, then I chiselled bits out and kind of broke them inwards. So I put a chisel down like the edge here and broke them that way. And then I got like a scraping tool and scraped. It's a bit of an ordeal, but it worked out. How you doing, Remo? What's going on? There's a lump there that I do not like. Let's get rid of that. Cheers, Rima. What's going on? What's happening in Remo land? Good things? Second job. Oh. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. All right, bummer. What's up with the car then, Remo? For it to cost that much, I mean. And how is the uh, how is that job going? Is it is it all right or what? Are you enjoying it? Or you know, or not hating it at least. Knee brakes, knee timing belt. Oh, bummer. Okay, still not there yet. It's alright, not much downtime. It suits you? Okay. You know, I had much time to do any uh, making then. SPD? Anything to get your hands on? What country are you in SPD if, if you don't mind me asking? You don't have to answer, but... Not much making... Oh, okay. Bathroom organiser thing. Oh, I don't know. I think it counts. Anything counts. If you made it, it counts. Oh, Norfolk, yeah, SPD, you did. You said the other day. You had said this already, I remember now. Yeah. Sorry, I asked that already. Scraps of walnut and white, white oak. Oh, cool, Rima. Company good organisers. Yeah. That's the problem, like, quite often you can never really find the exact thing you want, you know. Well, I say problem, it's not really a problem if you enjoy making stuff and know how to make stuff in that sense it becomes quite a cool thing but if you're looking to just buy something quickly and forget about it often you can't because you know they're never really what you're exactly looking for Apart from the top, the other one sticks in. Okay, yes, we do. Is that something where that Remo would normally be involved in, or? as far as that one goes in. So I'm going to measure from the, the top to the... Sorry, let me take it back a bit. I'm going to measure from the top to here, so I know the distance from there to there, and then 
We'll push the other one in as far as it goes and measure from the top to the bottom and see if we've got it in there enough or not. I don't think we have. It might have to go in a bit further. But um, we'll see. So that's like 17. Let's see. higher. Yeah, so 18.5, it's got to go in another centimetre and a half really, to be the same as the other one. So we've got a bit further to go there. You can see the line on there where I've pushed it in, maybe, see the line there? So we've got a bit more to do there. Hey UFO, how you doing? Yep, yep, is it? Oh really? Oh bummer. Oh wow, Remo, really two months ago, holy moly. Yeah, it always sucks when a computer dies. Usually just out of nowhere. Same with car problems as well, I guess. Kind of just suddenly happen. centimetre to go. Yeah. <sighs> I'm alright, thanks, UFO. You got a laptop off, not using a computer. You haven't been using a computer for 15 years. You have no need for it. Oh, that was a 